Hello everybody and welcome back to LMM and if you're enjoying what you're seeing on the channel at the moment how about giving this video a like and maybe subscribing to the channel to help us grow and perhaps even check out our Patreon. Today I'm here at the Foxfield Railway because today I'm going to be driving something. But it wasn't going to be 111C that recently appeared on the channel nor was it going to be the Kerr Stewart which which would be running the service train today. So no, it's not what you expected. Today, I'm here driving the miniature railway. This is a seven and a quarter inch gauge railway that runs up here and round the field here at the Fox Hill Railway. And today, they were short of a driver. And so they went, Laurie, do you fancy coming up for a day and operating our train? To which I said, yes. So this is our train. Two little petrol engine locomotives, both with a hydrostatic drive. We're operating top and tail, so we go up the line, run all the way around and come back facing the other way and then the other locomotive drives. So which means we need two people. And like I said, today they only had one. So yours truly is now a, a miniature railway driver here at the Foxwood Railway. But of course, I didn't just walk straight into this. So let's go back a few hours to when I turned up. And having signed on, just like any other volunteer, my first self-appointed task was to go for a little nosy about. It's amazing, isn't it? You have this huge, great building. And when you see it, you're like, oh, you're gonna fit so much in that. Four engines. You forget how big locos are, and these are tiny engines. But this massive brake shed, which would really screw up, take a Mark One, and you've put four engines in it, and it's, it's full. And it's just you don't quite work out space with railways. They just become they eat space. Outside, there was one locomotive that had really caught my attention, and it wasn't actually the witch. And whilst I enjoyed my first cup of tea of the morning, I looked at this. This is Hercules, and it is a Ruston 48DL that's been put in a converter wagon, basically turning into a Ruston 48DS like mine, and it's just wonderful. As the sign was now coming out advertising the railway being open, I headed over to receive my training and to see exactly what we'd be doing today. The first stage was to open the sheds, giving me my first glimpse of what the miniature railway had to offer. But before I could go and hover and explore inside the shed, we had to add the piece of joining track and we could pull out the first of today's locos. Oh, like this, I'm gonna take this one out, and this one out, and that one out, and that one out, and the tram. This is, this is the good shed. This is the good shed on This is the good shed. I like this, this is cool. Oh yes. I want most of this. And I like that. And I like this. And I like that one. Once I'd been dragged away from looking at everything inside the shed, I was taken through the controls and operation of the little locomotive. buttons and there are levers and I've already forgotten which is which but I'd price of elimination it'll be fine. The next move was to go and get the coaches and as we had a locomotive already out we figured we'd do it properly. We also collected our second locomotive that was going to be on the other end of the train. And then I could have my familiarisation session on this locomotive as well. And with that all done, it was time to go off and do a line walk. The purpose of this is to go and inspect the railway to make sure that it's physically still there and nothing untoward has happened to it in the meantime since we've been away. And as silly as it may sound, this is something that happens on a regular basis on all heritage railways to make sure that the line itself is safe to carry passengers. And having confirmed that the railway was indeed still there, I changed into my blues and hopped onto the locomotive ready to take the train out on my first trip. Now, out of the two engines I, that I have to have a go on today, this is, I would say, the better. It's a little more complicated to drive because you have to keep adjusting it and playing with it. Whereas the other one is going to set it and let it go. 
but this one is faster and although they say it's less powerful it gives the sense to be more powerful because it just goes quite pleasant. Now again, this would be terrible if this was a nasty day, but it's not too hot today, it's not too cold, it's just a really nice day to be out on a little miniature railway. Come here, we have the point so we slow down. Two mile now, which is basically walking pace through the point. Make sure we come through. Now the railway drops away, so we've come off the long incline the top here where it drops down and now through the five and we can carry on i thought there was somebody there it's a dinosaur there's something very fun about just being on a mincer engine it's hugely enjoyable it's also a decent length of a line it's not too short it's not too long it's just a good length to go around the loop and then back as you can really see the railway as we go over the points, just dropping down away. That's, that's quite a sharp grade for a, a miniature railway. Now the conditions today are dry, which means the chances of slipping are relatively low. But as we go down this anyway, we'll make sure we control the speed, just in case better with all these things always to travel slowly with a sense of caution than to try and regain control when things go south. My induction to the locomotive and training complete, we returned to the platform, ready to go out on another engine. But first, I was distracted by some of the traction engines that were turning up for the day's rally. And after it had driven off, I returned to the railway and hopped onto the second locomotive, Brian, and drove it round to the front of the train, coupled up, and then we headed off up the line. So despite being a very similar engine, in fact the same engine, and a very similar transmission, in fact the same transmission, this drives entirely differently. Because this one, you have to drive on the throttle. Put it into full drive, full gear, and then you're just on the throttle. Now the idea is that this is a differently geared, this is a much lower geared machine, so this will pull whatever you want. It just does it a lot slower, and with a bit more noise. But it does mean that it's basically a sat and forget, you just put it how you want it and off we go. Listen to that raw power. to the slow two mile an hour so we'll just drop the throttle right back and gently trundle through the points and now it's a matter of sitting back and just let it drive itself automated trains all the rage you know
the genuine biggest difference between these is that sitting on this driving truck, I feel a lot more exposed than I did on Tother. This one I feel very much that I'm perched on rather than I'm riding on it. This is lovely. And that hydrostatic drive holds its speed lovely as well, so it just takes control of itself around here. So I'm just keeping a good lookout to make sure the line ahead is fine and be on hand if anything goes south. Apart from that, it knows its way. You really do notice when the railway goes uphill though, like there. My favourite thing about this is just how tranquil it is. And I would just let it pool itself down the line. This is probably the easiest thing I've ever driven. I have never driven anything as easy. It's great. It's so well put together. Just point it and off it goes. Without doubt, the most simple, easiest to drive locomotive I think that's existed apart from the Hornby train set. It's so easy. That one's more fun. With my training now complete and the railway open, we didn't have to wait long for our first passengers. And by the time we'd taken these guys for a trip around the railway, there was another load of passengers to take for another trip. And by the time we got back again, there was another group of passengers to take for another trip. And again, and again, and again. In fact, we were so busy that I never actually got to have a break away from the little railway to go and look at all the wonderful steam engines that were in attendance. And it was quite a lovely display of miniatures and full-size engines. I particularly liked this thing as it hurtled around the site. And I was both disappointed to miss the engines, but also really excited to be actually doing something useful. And that's not to say that every single train that we ran was absolutely jam-packed full of people. But every time we came back into the platform, there were people waiting to go for a ride. And so, we obliged. Now this is Ben, who is one of my cameramen, but has also been a volunteer at the Foxfield Railway for quite some time. And today, unbeknownst to him, was also going to be his assessment as a driver on the miniature railway. Which meant that during the lunchtime, where things got a little bit more quiet, we could take him out, do some runs, and give him his assessment as well. Once he passed out on driving one of the locomotives, him and I could operate the services for the rest of the day. Following Ben's field promotion to driver on the Miniature Railway, something that never happened before occurred. And that was the LMM operated a railway in its entirety because we are the driver, the driver at the other end slash guard and the ticket collectors. We are the people operating this railway. So the first time ever LMM has operated a public railway in its entirety. It's kind of surprised me actually. <laughs> yeah, that's quite cool. <laughs> Although you are wearing no merch. But. And this is disappointing. I was, I was expecting to be mostly behind the camera 
Yes. And fetching drinks. So what happened basically today was Ben went, I really want to get passed out on the Minch Railway. I want to be able to do something as part of the railway. So the normal way this works is that you'll be put on with a more experienced driver. And the railway went, well, Laurie, you're plenty experienced, aren't you? You're the experienced driver. And that's how this worked. So, well done, sir. LMM operated a railway. We did it. And we didn't destroy it yet. That's a genuinely exciting, genuinely exciting thing that happened. Monumental, <coughs> monumental thing. Same time next year? I was going to say next week. Okay. And so, for the rest of the day, LMM operated the miniature railway. And just like the morning, people just kept turning up. And every time we came back, once again, we had to leave with a new trainload of passengers, which was pretty good fun. The only real downside to this was the fact that Ben was meant to be my cameraman for the day. So as soon as we began operating trains together, that rather limited the shots that we could get, as we only really could leave the camera in the station complex, rather than running up the line, leaving it rolling, running back to the train and driving past. So it did rather curtail any exciting film for the rest of the day. However, the trade-off was well worth it to actually be operating the railway. But soon enough, the day started to come to an end, but there was yet one more exciting thing lined up for me to do. And that was to go into the other road of the shed, install the tiny bit of rail to bridge the gap and bring out some of the freight stock. And when I say some of the freight stock, I actually mean all of the railway's freight stock and assemble it into a train to take out for a trip around the line. Once it had all been marshaled in position, I could put one of the engines on the front of the train and head out. So this is entirely now just playtime. So I've got this because, although it's louder, it has got a bit more go in it. And this is quite heavy because these are all proper wagons. harder work going out of here than it was with a full train of passengers. It's a lot heavier. I'm glad I've got this thing rather than the other one. Wow, there's a real weight behind this. That's all it's got. It's got no more. That's full power. the line dealt with so I can throttle back a bit. Now this isn't very fast but with the weight of it and having proper wagons and the stuff they use for P-Way, this just feels proper. It's a proper works train and this is where that divide between miniature and proper railway become a little bit blurred because yes this is a miniature railway but this is a proper train. This is a permanent way train that's used to maintain the railway. So what am I doing now? Is it a demonstration? Is it a real train? It's a real train, just in miniature. Because with this little thing, it looks really good. It's also really nice to give this thing a test to see what it will do and actually be able to put it through its paces a bit. Not that this has taxed it at all. It plods on regardless. It might be at full power, but it plods on regardless. And taking the freight out, just it's a really nice way to end the day, just have a little play at the end where you don't need to worry about looking after your, your passengers. And there's not many things that I'd like to do more in a nice summer's evening than just play on a miniature railway. one out and get some mileage behind this one. I've spent most of my day driving 
the other one on the passenger, the other one is far nicer. It's quieter and more, well, maybe not so refined, but certainly quieter, whereas this is just quite loud. But nonetheless, very enjoyable. This has been an excellent day. Absolutely superb day. And having arrived back with the little freight train, that brings us to the end of the day here at the Foxwood Railway. In truth, the public went home, well, some time ago, or went to the beer tent, and I've just been playing with that, which has been absolutely a wonderful way to spend an evening. So a massive great thank you to the Foxfield Railway for inviting me along today and allowing me to take the miniature railway under my control. It's been an absolutely super day and in total we've taken just short of £100 on this, which at a, a pound a ticket is actually, we've done really well. It's the most successful day the miniature railway has ever had and that I'm really proud to be part of. So thanks for watching guys, do check out more about the Foxfield in the video description and with that if you have enjoyed this one, how about clicking somewhere over there for another video that we've done on the miniature or over there for another video I've done of something else. And with that, I'm going to go and continue my drive. Ha <laughs> ha!